Hello, my name is Hilton Giesenau and I'm an MVP from Cape Town in South Africa and in this video we're going to look at how to make use of the wiki functionality in Windows SharePoint services. To create an actual wiki within your site you go up here to the site actions menu and click the create option and you can see wiki page library as one of the options in here. You can see the description up top there that this is going to create a series of interconnected wiki pages. So we can now go ahead and create our wiki by giving it a name and possibly a description as well and we can specify whether we want it to appear on the quick launch menu. You might recognize that these steps are very similar to creating a document library. This is because the wiki is stored in Windows SharePoint services in the form of a document library which we'll see in a moment. You can also see this though because the company knowledge base that we created as the name of our wiki appears under the documents section on the quick launch bar. When the wizard completes you can see here that it's created the first page in our wiki. So we can go ahead and edit that page by clicking on the edit button up in the top corner here and immediately we can edit the content of our wiki. So because it's a standard uh, wiki syntax that Microsoft's implemented. I can go ahead and just um, type some text in here using the WYSIWYG editor and I can go ahead and use standard features like bold and italics and change the font size and color. But I'm going to do uh, just a simple bit for now and I click the OK button and you can see that the content appears straight into the page. In a moment we'll look at how Microsoft's implemented the wiki syntax. But before we do, you can see here that if we uh, click onto the wiki main site following the uh, breadcrumb navigation at the top here, you can see that the two pages that exist out of the box for the wiki are simply stored as files in the document library, in this instance as HTML file types. So I can click on them here to browse them, or I can follow the links inside of the wiki library itself. If I go back to the home page of the wiki, which I can do just by clicking on the uh, title on the quick launch bar, let's look at the wiki linking syntax implemented in the WSS wikis. You can see here that certain of the text is um, surrounded by the double square bra brackets or braces, which is the standard wiki syntax that Microsoft has re-implemented here in WSS wikis as well. The default behavior for a link is for it to appear with the dotted underline indicating that no content yet exists but the title that we typed in here is displayed directly there's one modification that you can have the title that displays in the page separate from the page title that you're linking to as well and you can do this by um, importing two names inside of the square braces the f first being the um, actual page title and the second being the text as it must appear inside the page. Again notice that it's underlined as well with a dotted underline because no page yet exists. So if I follow one of these links and uh, go through to the blank template that's created, I can go ahead and capture some data, click create and I'm taken to the new page I created. But if I go back to the home page you'll see that the link is now resolved and it no longer has the dotted underline. Another important wiki feature that exists in WSS wikis is the ability to track changes and track a history inside of WSS. So you can see I'm going to go ahead and remove one of the lines in our new edit for the wiki for the default front page and when I click on history you can see that I've got five different versions that I've been creating as we've been going through the video. In the most recent version, it will show me the changes between this version and the version previously. You can see here that it's indicating deleted text via a gray background and via strike through as well. And it will indicate added text via highlighting it in yellow as well. In addition, I can immediately browse through different versions or previous versions of my document. So I'm going to go ahead here and browse to version 4 was the previous version before I removed the text and version 3 before I added the additional link 
and you can see the differences between the versions as well. If I decide that I want to restore one of the versions, I can click the restore this version link and uh, confirm with the confirmation prompt. And once I do so, the previous wiki page that I selected is restored as the new version of the page. And that is version histories in the wikis. If we look into a page, the last menu item that we have here there is to follow links and to see which pages are linking to us. One feature that does not appear with um, a lot of standard wiki tools, but that does appear in WSS wikis by virtue of the SharePoint infrastructure that it leverages, is the ability to create additional metadata columns. So if I view in the library view of my wiki, I can go ahead and create a column here, which will create a new metadata column. So I'm going to create a free single line of text metadata column. And I'm going to call it here subject matter expert, as you can see, and then just accept the defaults for the create column wizard. You can see my new column appears on the right hand side there. And if I want to go and edit the wiki page, I can go ahead and edit the properties for this file. And the new metadata field is added down here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and capture a name inside there. Click OK and you'll see the metadata appearing in this default grid view. But not only that, if I browse the page, it's added the metadata field down at the bottom of the page as well. And being that, that this is standard SharePoint metadata, this information will be included in search results as well. This is definitely a, an advantage to the metadata, and it also means that it can be stored separately from the content itself. One other thing that we can do with the metadata is to create a table of contents of sorts for our wiki. I'm going to do this by creating an additional field. This time I'm going to make it a choice, I'm calling it category here and just creating a few options under the choices. I can go ahead and set a default option here as well. I'm going to leave it as finance though. Once again, see that the new metadata field appears on the right on the grid view here. And once again, I can specify a value when I'm editing one of the items in the wiki. I'm going to set the value for all of our items so that we can see things actually appearing in the uh, table of contents. So I'm going to set the first two both to appear under the finance section. And the last one I'm going to set as human resources. It doesn't make sense to put this table of contents everywhere. So I'm only going to put it onto the front page here. And I go into the standard edit view. Uh, no. Hang on, that's not right. I go here onto the edit page view, not um, editing standard wiki contents anymore, but editing the web part page settings. And I'm going to add our list as a item to appear in the web parts section here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and modify this web part and I'm going to change the default current view. I can take off the top because they're obviously all HTML documents. And what's important is down at the bottom here, I'm going to set the grouping. And I'm going to specify that it must group by the new category column that we added. When I do so, we will get a table of contents appearing down here at the bottom. And you'll notice also that there's a slight delay as I expand each of these because these are loading um, using an asynchronous Ajax technology. So in this video we've seen how to make use of um, the out-of-box WSS wiki components and we've seen some of the ways that this wiki can be customized as well. If you'd like more information on this topic or other topics in the series you can contact me at hilton at or you can contact Microsoft at tell us at microsoft.com.